helper. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we need you this morning. We've got to have you. Nothing we can do without you. Lord, we want you, Lord, to even allow that spirit of revival to stand up on the inside of us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we need you. Oh, God, we come to hear a word. We come, oh, God, to get something, get refreshed, to get built up, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, we don't have anything good unless it comes from you. All good things come from you. And we ask, Lord, that you just send your word today. Come on, somebody, send your word, Lord. Send your word. Send your word. We need a word from you. Because we know that just one word will make the difference in our life.
and went right back to his seat and said, you, I mean, right back to the front and said, you got to do everything you do with love. <laughs> I said, what's wrong with this man? It's some crazy things that go on nowadays. And, and, and that is wrath. What is wrath? Acting upon our anger. A lot of times we don't know uh, that wrath can come in small ways. Sometimes it looks like it might not even be nothing big at all. Uh, I'm angry. I'm upset. You got me bothered. So what I do is I look at you and I roll my eyes. I am acting up on my anger. And that's wrong. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And if I uh, have to uh, say something out of anger, we got some that got some good mannerism. I think about my grandmother. She can talk and she can straighten you out without raising her voice one little bit. As a matter of fact, I've never heard her yell before in my life. But still, you can say something to somebody that's kind of tough or mean. You don't even have to yell. So we got to be careful on what we do when acting up on our anger. Oh, and it told us in this to be slow to speak. Yes. And swift to hear. Sometimes what we want to do, and this is what we really got to be careful of. Y'all, can I talk just a little bit? I've been hollering for the last, I don't know what. But so many times what we want to do, we want everyone to hear what we have to say. We want everybody to hear us. And sometimes we can't even stop. Come on now. To hear what they're trying to say. In, in everything, there is three sides to every story. There's your side, there's my side, and then there's the truth. Come on, somebody. And most of the time, let me tell you something, I can find right on both sides. And you know what else I can find on both sides? Wrong. So we're not all the way right. The only one that's all the way right is who? God. Oh, yeah. So we get to the point to where slow to speak and slow to wrath. Sometimes we got to think before we act. We got to think before we decide to do anything. What, uh, what is going to come from my actions? What am I, what's going to come from what I do? We got to think about these things. Come on, somebody. Think before you do anything. So go on down there and say, wherefore lay apart all filthiness. And superfluity, or rather abundance of naughtiness. And receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. All right. Woo, Lord. And if I just back up just a little bit, and sometimes if we be quick to hear and slow to speak, we might find out that even though some of the things that sound hard, sound tough, sound rough, it's really meant to help us. Yes, it's meant to help us. Sometimes it might be a swift rebuke, but how many of you know we need that sometimes? Every time I think about rebuke, it makes me think about Deacon Glenn. When he first started to the church, he would come to the front of the church and he'd come in telling me, Pastor, rebuke me, because I, I want to be right. If you don't rebuke me, I might be in the... Yeah, he wanted to be rebuked because he knew that it was needed. Lord, I do feel like teaching today. And then it goes on to say that word that is able to save your soul, but it tells us not to be just hearers of the word. Be ye, oh my, come on somebody, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Because what we find ourselves doing is deceiving our own selves. You'll tell somebody who is a doer of the word and not just a hearer because uh, they are consistent in their walk. They're consistent in their praise. They are consistent, come on somebody, and, and, and faithful to God. Amen. Yes, they don't be up and down. One day I got a praise that blows the roof off the house. And the next day I can't even lift my head up to praise him. All right. What I'm doing is I'm just hearing the word and reacting to what I hear, but I'm not doing it. Right. Come on, tell somebody, do the word. It's important. So then it goes on to say, oh my, uh, it, 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 we have to understand, oh, let me slow my roll because I really feel
feel like going here. It says, we have to know what we have. The word of God is quick and is powerful. It's alive and powerful. Come on, somebody. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Old saints used to say it'll cut you going in and it'll cut you coming out. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But it is a powerful thing. Woo! And when we deal with that word of God, it said it's sharper than any, and then the, 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 it tells us the armor of God, that sword itself is made up of the word and of the spirit. Hallelujah. And if you got the word of God, there's nothing that will be able to stop you. So what we have to do is know what we have. Know what we have. Know when we have the word on the inside, we have something great. We have something powerful. We got something that is awesome. Amen. Do you know if we can just walk in the word? Woo. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Oh my God, today, this thing is hitting me right here. If we can just walk in the word. We hear a lot about the word. We hear about how the word can heal you. How the word can deliver you. How the word can do this and do that. Come on, back in the days, let me explain something to you. Back in the days, me and, 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 my, and my brothers, my boys, Elder Hart and even himself, we used to wear these things that was called Jerichos. Y'all know them things. Come on, somebody. Am I right, Ellen? And, and Sister Carmen, I used to make all different types of unnecessary movements just so that people could see my hair shake. Oh, yes. Sister Madden, you better ask somebody. Yeah, for no reason. Somebody say, Mike, I, yeah, you hear me? I wanted, that. I wanted it to sway. <laughs> and one thing that I did not do, I didn't go around with no dry Jerry curl. Y'all ain't hearing me. Wait, y'all ain't, ain't catching it. Y'all ain't hearing me yet. But what I would do, if it even looked like it wanted to get dry, they had this stuff called some curl activator. <laughs> So when it'll dry out, what we would do would put that activator in and it'll activate and it'll make them curls snap right back. As a matter of fact, let me tell you something. Even when, when you, the curl get to getting old, you got to wait about three months before you get another one. Let me tell you something. This is before I got the perm. So I knew about the curls. Wait about three months or, or two or three months, whatever. Six weeks, three months, whatever. And then when it start wearing out on you, I even found something else. I used to like the TCB curls, but the Carefree had something good too. And what they had was a, a, a bottle, it was called Snapback. <laughs> y'all ain't hearing me. I thought y'all knew something about that. And when, and when you get that Snapback, even if the curl looked like it was going out of business, you get that Snapback, it was something about that Snapback that was snapping right back in line. So I said that to say this, when it comes to the Word of God, our faith is the activator. Come on, somebody. If we can have some faith, we can activate and move God in some ways, come on, somebody, that will confuse and confound and, and mess up the world. Because God is still God. Y'all hear me today? He is still God. He said Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. Y'all not feel that
we are. No, what we have. And, and our faith will activate whatever it is we need. Yeah. Woo! Can I talk just a little bit? Yeah. One old school preacher kind of talked a little bit. And, and let me tell you something. He let us know that even Adam, when he, when he fell, when he sinned, that there was a punishment. And that punishment that he had to suffer and, and go through by the sweat of his brow. Mm -hmm. But oh, we was in the hospital last night with Brother Congo and we got to talking about the blood of Jesus. Hey, hey. We got to talking about, come on somebody, the blood still works. Oh, yes. And what we have to understand, come on somebody, is that he really was wounded for our transgressions. Yes, and he was bruised for our iniquity and the chastisement of our peace. It was even upon him. And by those stripes, come on somebody. And it's in the blood. Yes. Oh, I feel like preaching. And let me tell you, when we suffer by the sweat of our brow, let me tell you something. Oh, I need your brother Mark hold that head up. But they took a crown of thorns and they stuck it. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me today. Right in his head. And, and then where the sweat would have poured down on your brow, God delivered and he allowed the blood to roll down. And all oh, there's power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, I feel like preaching. All you got to do is use your activator. Hey, hallelujah. Hey, yes, Lord. And, and if you ran out of the activator, you better go to the store and get you some snapback. Because God is still God. He's still in the healing business. He's still in the saving business. He's still a deliverer. He's still a way maker. trying to make my things today. So get to the point. If we use what we have, if we use what God has given us, if we can be doers of the word and not hearers only, all we got to do is start by following the vision. God gives us word after word after word. And if we can go by the word We wouldn't have to worry all the time. Yes. Oh, come on, somebody. We don't have to worry about who's coming against us. Because the word said, fret not thyself because of evil doers. Oh, come on, somebody. We don't have to want what nobody else got. Neither be envious of the workers of iniquity. Because they will be cut down. But those that hold on to the word of God. Feel like preaching. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, there is hope. There is hope. We got some hope, you all. Thank you. Elder, he preached and he just said something good. We don't go to the store and the grocery store just to come on somebody to sightsee. Woo. I want to browse. I want to look at this bread today. Woo, look at that bread. No. Yeah. I, I got the sightsee. Y'all ain't hearing me. Come on now. Butter. Look at that butter. Hallelujah. No. But you go to get something. And what we got to understand is that when we come over here, oh, y'all don't know what y'all doing today. Can I say, I come over here to stay, Lord. Jesus, every 
when it's this right here, we don't have to. Uh, it, it, some of us have messed up. Yeah. Some of us have messed up. Yes, we all have messed up. Yes, yes, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all have messed up. Yes, sir. Have we? Yes, sir. If you hadn't, yes, call me to the side and tell me what you did so I can. Oh, Lord. Hmm. But we all have glory, messed up. Glory, glory, glory. And being that we all have messed up, I wanted to kind of let you know that you don't have to worry about your first impression. All right. See, a lot of people, they get so stuck on their first impression, but that's a secular thing. Am I right? When you go to the job, you want to look good. You're right. And go to that interview, you want to have your tone right. You want to have this, you want to have that. But when it comes to God, you don't have to just worry about your first impression. <laughs> and see, even in the world today, that's what people do. And, and, and let me tell y'all, y'all be careful on how you view people in their first impression. Yeah. Don't you let somebody win you over because of their first impression. That's right. That's right. That's right. So true. Mm -hmm. That man might send you 50 flowers. Come on, somebody. That's right. And then take That's you out right. to dinner and, and he might just want to show and, and put a tip on the table, $50 and, and all this type of stuff and ain't got no yeah. money. And then the next day yes. you come on, he yes. done slapped you upside yes. the head and told you you pay for it. First impression don't mean nothing. Some of them just want to impress you so they can get a piece of butt. Alright. Alright. Right. Hallelujah. And that word impression, it means to leave a mark. Come on, somebody. And, and, and it comes from the root word impress. Oh, come on now. Hallelujah. And, and then when you impress, you leave something memorable. Oh, Lord, help me. And when we deal with that, sometimes that's all that we need in order to keep somebody. Woo! Because they fall in love with that first thing. They fall in love with that first thing. The way that woman looked when, oh, y'all ain't hearing me. They fall in love with the first time, the first thing she say. And then next thing you know, she's looking at somebody else and you chase it. Y'all hear me? Y'all, I'm preaching today. I'm, I'm about to tell myself to preach. Hallelujah. But first impression don't mean anything because sometimes the first impression is nothing more than an act. Listen, I know this fella, and I'm, there's two of them. I know one fella, he, Elder, Elder Hart to tell you, he used to walk, and, and, and we, you know that walk wasn't real. It wasn't real. He was trying to be tough and hard. Mother, I can't even do the walk right now. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's tough. 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 And trying to scare somebody the way he walked, he just imagine how he roll up out of the bed and go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's not real. Uh -huh. Then we got our brother, Elder Harden, brother Peter. That man when he, he had a thing, Jure, he leaned up against the wall. And if he had a a shirt with a coat on, he will push it back and have his hand in his pocket. And how'd he do, Elder? You remember? Uh, that was the way he had to start off and walk. <laughs> and me being who I am, y'all y'all didn't know me back then. What I do, Elder? I tricked him. <laughs> Cause it wasn't real. Get out of here with that. Come on now. But first impression, don't get stuck on it. But what you got to do is get that spirit that discerns. Uh -huh. That's right. That spirit that will tell you what are the intentions. Yeah. Mm. Oh my God. Woo. Oh. Hallelujah. And those people, even nowadays, they don't walk like they used to walk. Oh, no. <laughs> they they 
kind of trying to be like us, but they're going the other way. They don't talk like they used to talk. Yes. But there's been a change in that. And can I tell you the only one that I know that I met 16 years ago that's exactly the same as it was when I met him. His name is Jesus. See, he don't try to put on no front. Because he knows that there's no future in your front. He don't try to look good. But God is good. Come on, somebody. But Jesus is the same as he always been. So what I want you to do is to get in touch with Jesus. And let him tell you what you need to do. What you need to do is do everything that he tells you to do. Yeah. 
Can I give you one more thing? How do we lose faith? I got to tell you this so we can go. Because y'all are getting something here. Y'all better take this. You better take it. Mother, put it in the knapsack. Hallelujah. How does one lose faith? By doubting oneself. That's how you lose faith. That's how you lose faith. Some of us know that God is able. We got all faith in God. But sometimes the things we cannot receive and can't have because we are doubting not God, but we're doubting ourselves. Because we know that we haven't walked right. We know we haven't talked right. We know we haven't done the right thing. So, oh, we get to the point to where we can't even pray a prayer of faith because we know that we've been messed up and in a messed up position. So we cannot receive at time because we got doubt. Not just in God, but in ourselves. We wonder why would God give me something when I know I haven't been all the way faithful to him? Can I have somebody say amen if we can't do that same? Hallelujah. Know that we've been messed up. And, and we got to get to the point to where we learn how to care about that thing. Uh -huh. Learn how to care about yeah. it. Because some of us come to church like we didn't just get in an argument with our spouse. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Some of us come to church like ain't nothing wrong at all. We can praise God over mess. My Lord, my Lord, ain't so. But that brings about doubt. And then when we have doubt, there's no way that we can carry out the will. Oh God. Y'all ain't hearing me. Amen. So we got to be to the point to where we have to be ye doers uh -huh. of the word uh -huh. and not hearers only. Amen. God bless. Amen. Amen. Yes. Everybody stand in. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody stand in all over the kingdom. Amen. We've all been in certain situations. We've all said. But I heard the song say he was there all the time. Yes, yes. Waiting patiently in line. Yes, God has never moved. Amen. If there was ever anybody to change positions, it was us. But how many of you know it's never too late for a new beginning? Your time is now. Your time is now. Yes, yes. God is waiting on us. Amen. Amen. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? According to your faith, so be it done unto yes, you. Yes. If we could just have the grain, the faith the size of a grain of mustard seed. That's it. That's it. Y'all, we can move mountains. If you feel today that your faith has decreased, if you feel today that your faith is low, if you feel today like you're running on empty and you simply need a refill, God is waiting on you today. Good. But God is also real. 